but I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. We'll begin the service. We'll sing number 172, Kneel at the Cross. a good subject for us to think about and to begin the service this morning kneeling at the cross Christ will meet you there come while he waits for you I want that to be on every one of our mind this morning our eternal life depends upon that that we put it all at the cross we take it all to Jesus Christ he is waiting there he paid the price listen to his voice 
hear his word and follow him. Put our full faith and trust in him, Jesus Christ. Not our will. Leave with him your care. And listen to that next end. And begin life anew. Isn't that wonderful to think about this morning? That he spells that out. He says, kneel at the cross. Bring it to him. Christ is there. He will meet you there. Come while he waits. There can come a time to when it will be eternally too late. Come now. Hear his voice. Listen to him. And leave your care with him. And begin life anew. Is your life troubling you this morning? Is there things in your life troubling you this morning? Just take it to him. And begin new life. Repent of our sins. Put it all into his hands. And receive that remission for those sins. Have them taken away. Removed as far as the east is from the west. Never to be brought up again. Removed. Taken away. Paid for by Jesus Christ. Not your good works. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're approaching that season very rapidly. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's two weeks from today, maybe three weeks, that it will be Easter Sunday. I believe it is. It's three weeks. And we should have these things on our mind and putting forth an effort, as he says, strive to be at one. Stay under this body and bring it under the subjection of the Spirit of God by the power of God, by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost being given to us. All of these things are so wonderful us to think about this morning that it can be ours so that we can begin life new here upon the earth and that we can have that eternal life. Lord, I want to constantly, is it in my mind that I'm constantly trying to do and to make myself look more like the world? Or am I constantly desiring the things that the world would be involved in? And I'm, when I say the world, I believe he mentions those things here in the Bible quite often and he's talking about to me the things that he does not approve of, the things that will lead us away from eternal life, will lead us away from Jesus Christ. He says these things are enemies of his. But he says, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. It's a promise of what Jesus Christ is telling us. I've overcome these things for you. Hear my word and harden not your heart, but hear the word and accept it. And let it give to you eternal life. Friends, we have such a wonderful opportunity to know him and to live by him. But is that truly what you want? 
Is your life showing that that's what you want, that you want to live in accordance to how Jesus Christ lived? You want to live as he is asking his people to live. You want his power over sin. You want that new life. You want that eternal life. Is that what you want more than the things of this world, than putting forth living in sin for a few short weeks, a few short years? And we can, we'll see in those days, when that final day comes, we'll see how the, all of this world, all of the things that we looked upon that was so good that we wanted and that we put all of our time and effort into acquiring that type thing, we'll see that we're about to leave them. And I hope that we can all see that today, that they're all temporal. It's temporary. Yes, we need certain things here to live. But don't let them be your God. Let there be one God. Jesus Christ and God the Father. Let them be when they are one and the same. The same Spirit. And let's put them first in everything. And lay aside our will. And receive that peace, peace, hope, charity. And he says, greater than all these, he says, faith, hope, and charity. I said peace. But peace is what comes with that new birth. But when we look at having faith and hope and charity... And he says all of these things are good. But the greatest of them all is charity. And that's that pure love. Pure love for God the Father and the Son. And he says if we have that, then we're going to have love for others. And we're going to want to do whatever we can to help others. We're going to want to follow Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to be wanting to do. So let's all this morning be reconciled to his word let's hear his word let's pay attention to his word and be at one we turn to Titus this morning there's a lot of good instructions and that is just three short chapters there some really good instructions for us all and let's read some there and let's take heed to what his word is let's just start there at the second chapter of Titus he says but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine now that was what he was encouraging this young man to go out and to preach and to teach and to instruct the people around the church. And that is what I want to be doing here this morning is to teach, to instruct, and to help you all to understand where Christ would have us to be today. And here's what I want to do. I want to speak to you the things which become sound doctrine, the things that are right here recorded in this book. So that we can grow spiritually. We can understand that this is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. This is the doctrine of God. And what would the doctrine be? What would the, how do you look upon that when you see those words there that come, become sound doctrine? What are you thinking about when that happens? When you hear those words? It should be that we are now ready to hear a doctrine that would be being taught how someone had relayed this or someone had had a way of living written down or something that was very important for us to know. And you'd say, this is the doctrine. This is what somebody knew. This is what they wrote down so that others would be able to know it and hear it 
and live by it or help them to get along better in this life, whatever that might be. But he's talking about here the sound doctrine, the words of Jesus Christ that we can hear, we can read, we can understand and know that it can be put in our mind and it can be written in our heart so that then we can walk as he would have us to walk. And then he goes on and he just starts right into giving this doctrine to the people there. He said that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. Now, here's what he's saying. He says, now, I'm going to give you this doctrine. I'm going to teach you what Jesus Christ has taught the people and what, was, what others have taught me. He says, now, you do these things so that the men, the aged men, you talk to them, you under, let them understand that they be sober, sober in their mind, in their thoughts, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. Sound in that. What does that mean to us? That we are solid in it. That we are strong in it. We are founded in it. And that is how we let those things govern our life. That we're sober and we're grave. We're temperate in all things. Sound in faith. Our faith is strong. Our faith is full of trust. And that love we have for God. And then being patient, waiting upon Him. He says, in your patience possess you your souls. We are patient. We are not trying to get ahead of God. But we're patient, waiting for Him to direct us. And then when He says move, we are ready to move. The aged women likewise. He just tells them all. Here, you older men, you older women, you hear this doctrine. And you use that doctrine so that this is the attributes in your life. Aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, but teachers of good things. Men and women, the older ones here today, are we setting forth the right and the proper example in our life just is, is this, can this be said of how the, that man or that woman that has some age here upon them, is that how they are living their life and others are able to see? This was the encouragement that Paul was writing to Titus there. And he was telling them, you teach these people the good doctrines. You teach them about Jesus Christ so that this will be the attributes in them. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Is that in our lives today, women? You older women. Is that something that you have an interest in doing? That you feel like that you are living your life in a manner so that you can help and you can teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Is that in your lifestyle today? Or do I just go back and don't have much to say? And you know when, you, when he's saying that, he says that you may teach your young women to be sober. What does that mean? That doesn't just mean to me that to stay away from drugs or alcoholic beverages or something. It teaches them to have their mind clear clear from the clutter of the things of this world. 
It teaches them how that they are young to be sober in how they act, what they say, how they dress, and how they honor and love their husband, and how they honor or how they love their children, and that they are they are wanting to do all that they can to support their husband in the truth and to train their children to be obedient in the homes and to be obedient to the parents. And the older women should be encouraging them in that. Encouraging them in it with love. Not going out here and trying to instruct them that I am more holy than you and you need to listen to me. But with a love. That what he's saying there. That they may teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands. To love their children. To be discreet. Chaste. Keepers at home. Good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Listen to that carefully. Here's what he wants us to teach. Here's what he wants us to be setting forth the example and helping to be discreet. Not going out here all involved in everything that you can think of worldly. Now there's things that yes we need to be involved in and we need to help but not to bring honor to yourself but to do it in a very humble way of helping others. Chase chase pure the way I look at that. Getting sin out of our life and encouraging others to be modest. Keepers at home, knowing that that is our first duty for the mother to be at home with her children. God's given you the children, He has given us the opportunity. Many, many years ago, 60 years ago or so almost. To be able to train our children at home. To be able to teach them. And others throughout the land. Now, that is a very popular way of doing things. But God gave you the opportunity at a very early time. To be a keeper at home. And to train your children the way you'd have them to be trained. To give them an education, but also to let them know about Jesus Christ and God the Father and how he'd have us to live our lives. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Listen to that. These attributes, these things that he's saying there for us to do. If you go back, it's nothing more but just the commandments of God. It is how he has asked for us all the way back, how he has asked for the family to be, who the husband is, who the wife is, what their duties are. That is what he has asked for it to be done here, how he has asked for it to be done. And he's saying, now do these things so that you are not blaspheming the word of God. That's serious. That is a serious thing there, friends, when we think about that. That here is what he's asking us to do. Now, if we are not living our life in that way, what is happening? Paul says that we are blaspheming the word of God. That's serious. Take it to that. Listen at it. And then let's follow it. He was, this is what I am here this morning to be just as what Titus was. 
to teach you to speak the things which become sound doctrine in you. And then I want to go over and hear and read what he was telling about in that day. And then he goes right on. Now he's given to this these for the older people. And now he starts there with a different group. And he says, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Now, young men, where is your mind this morning? Where is it throughout the week? Where is it each day? He says, now likewise, I have, I have told you this to the other things. And he said the same thing to the women. He told them. He gave out what, how the man should be. And then he said to the aged women, likewise, be the same as then the men. And then he added a few other things to them. And then he comes on down there to the men, the young men, and he says, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Now all of you young men, listen carefully. Have that in mind. Is it sober this morning? Is it a mind that is not cluttered with the things of this world that has you drunken upon those things? Or is it a mind that is ready to accept the Word? Is it a mind that is hungering and thirsting for righteousness? He says there, to be sober-minded. In all things, Showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is on the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. That's saying a lot, young men. Is this in your lives? And it can be. You can have that taken away. You can live in this manner. And that's not a bad life. You look around and people say, oh, you're just living in that. You don't enjoy anything. That is false. You know, to live in accordance with his doctrine will give you and bring the greatest peace and the greatest joy that you could ever have here upon this earth is by following these words right here can give you the greatest peace and joy of anything. Sound speech. Let's just go back to that seventh verse and read all those again. What he's saying there. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. And that's only with the Spirit of the God within you. And doctrine showing uncorruptness. Gravity and sincerity. Having the doctrine of God written in your mind and in your heart. Sound speech. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is on the contrary part may be ashamed. That he that is maybe professing there that yes, I'm a Christian, but he's not living in these things. But he might see your righteousness within you and see that spirit working wonderful works within you and be ashamed of his life. Be ashamed of the sin that is in our life. Be pricked in the heart. That is what took place there on the day of Pentecost. These people, when Peter gave that wonderful message that he gave to them there and told them what was happening, they were pricked in their heart. They were ashamed of what had taken place in their life. And that's what he wants us to live our life so that others that is not living, that may be living in sin or whatever, they may have their heart pricked 
and they may be ashamed of how they are living and flee to God. That they may be ashamed having no evil thing to say. Those people didn't have anything evil to say about Peter that day. They said, what must we do to be saved? It was the most wonderful thing that could have come out of their mouth. What must we do? I am ashamed of my life. I am ashamed of how I have lived. You're telling me how I can have this taken away. What must I do? Now that should be on our mind this morning. What must I do? Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and please them well in all things, not answering again, not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. And again, what Paul was just talking about there, that servants being obedient people there there were slaves in that day there was people that were servants to others and he was just bringing it all just telling everyone there what they might do and how that the young women should live the young men live the older men the young the older women and now he's talking about the servants there to be obedient and we should do the same thing in our day to be obedient and main thing for each and every one of us in our day is to be obedient to who? Who is our master? Who is our Lord? God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's our Lord and that's our master. And let's take this in our day and apply it to us as we should have it applied there. Be obedient to their own masters. That. In our day, I'm going to say that is God and His Son. And to please them well in all things. Not answering again. Not prolonging. Not showing. But showing all good fidelity. That they may adorn the doctrine of, our, of God, our Savior, in all things. That we may be able to adorn that. We may have that. We might put that upon us. The doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things today. That's the only way that it can happen. is through the doctrine and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Putting our faith in Him and His Father. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace of God. I want you to think about that. What is that? The grace of God that bringeth salvation. Jesus Christ. God sent His Son here to the earth to bring salvation, to overcome Satan, to bring salvation in them. The grace of God was extended and brought forth and made available to all men on that day of Pentecost. The grace of God, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> the power of God, the grace of God that brings salvation in you and me. It's appeared to all men that want it. And it is available to all men, all women. And it's appeared there. And listen to hear what now he says. That's appeared. It's available. Teaching us. Now listen, this is what that Spirit of the Holy Ghost, this is what the power of God is able to do. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, 
and godly in this present world. Now he's talked and he told them all these things. Now he's telling them how that all this can happen. He says the grace of God has been brought forth. The grace of God is available to all mankind. It's appeared. It's available. And what will it do when we accept that? What will that do? He says it will teach us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And I'm going to add something to that. In this present evil world. Because look around today. Now this is what we talked about in the very beginning of this service today. About getting away from the things of this world. He says that's an enemy to God. It's an enemy to his work. Here was Paul instructing Titus in the same things that we're talking about. The, this is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's what Paul was teaching then. It is the same thing that I am teaching today. Teaching us that denying these things. In this present evil world. Denying the worldly lust, we should live soberly, keeping our mind full of the things of God, righteously, having that spirit of the Holy Ghost within us, and godly. The only way that any of us can have any of that is being or having that new birth. And that's the only way we can overcome in this evil world that we live in. That the prince of this world has power over you and me. He has no power over the Spirit of God. But he has power over us. But if we put that, that Spirit, come within us and live in this tabernacle, the Spirit of God, then we can overcome. And I want us to keep that in mind. We can overcome. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Listen. Looking for that blessed hope. Remember talking just a few moments ago about having that hope, peace, and joy. Are we looking for that today? Is that what we are desiring? Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ in us first. Is that what we're looking for? We're desiring to have above all things who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Again, he's just telling some of those, some of these things, the attributes that will be in us, all of these things. And are we looking forward to that? The blessed hope, is that what we're desiring above all things? the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ in us with the power that can overcome, that can give us peace. And how can we have that? Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, that he might be able to take away our sins and he might give us the power over iniquity. Take it all away and purify unto himself a peculiar people. That is the church. That is the spiritual church 
of Jesus Christ, that he is offering his spirit to them and they have received that spirit. They have been purified now. They are a peculiar people, a special people. They're not like the people of the world. That is just the common thing that goes through the world. Now they are saved. Now they have that new spirit. They are special. They are peculiar in the eyes of the world. Zealous of good works. Is that what? Do we have a zeal to want to follow him? Do we have a zeal to want the works of Jesus Christ being done in us every day and everything that we do? Are we zealous toward that? We will be if we truly want to hear that word, if we truly want to follow him. That will be, we will be zealously affected in that. Are you one of those people? Are you a part of that spiritual church of Jesus Christ? Are you a peculiar person in the eyes of the Lord because in the eyes of, well, you in the eyes of the Lord too, a peculiar, you're special to Him. But are you peculiar in the eyes of, of the world? Because that Spirit of the Holy Ghost is so strong within you. And it condemns their evil ways. And they look upon you in a bad way. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And friends, I want that to be understood right here. This is what Paul was telling this young preacher, this young man. Now he says, now you speak these things. And I, want to, and I hope that I have spoken these things this morning to get your attention so that you can hear and know what he's talking about. These things speak and exhort, encourage and rebuke, rebuke sin with all authority, with all the authority that God has to give to his ministers here upon the earth today. And that is where I should be today. Encouraging you and rebuking sin in any way that it may be. And friends, if these things, and we've talked about this, how we dress, do you feel like that you are doing that as we're talking about here, being sober, being chaste, not appearing as the world? This is the words here that he spoke. This is the doctrine that he wanted us to live by. And he's warning Titus, he says, now go, and he's warning me this morning to speak these things strongly to you, to encourage you that this is how the Spirit of the Holy Ghost will work within you. And if you can't see these attributes there, something is wrong. Rebuke with all authority. And that is where I want to be today with the authority of God the Father and Jesus Christ. Not man's authority, not the authority that I might feel like I have. But I, and that's what he was talking to him about there, is that you are a minister of God. Now you have the authority of God to preach and to teach his word, but preach it accurately and truly. Let no man despise thee. It's the word of God. You might despise me. I'm the messenger. But don't despise his word. And don't despise me because if he has called me and I am his messenger, it's his word, it's not mine, that I am given to you. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to be able 
to just whatever it might be and to be subject to the things here of, of this life as far as we can to where they do not go against the law and against the what the God would have to us to live. He says to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Speak to speak evil of no man. And I know we've heard these things all of our life that if you can't say something good about someone, don't say it. That's a very good thing said. He says, speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle. Not an attitude of going out and trying to be argumentative to others just for the sake of arguing, just to try to prove to them of what you know. But he says, be gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. A meek and a contrite heart. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now, Paul was just reminding him. Now, don't do these things, live these things. But then he goes on and he says, For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. And I believe Paul was talking to him there about before he had been converted, that that was his lifestyle. Paul thought he was walking upright with God. We might be thinking that that's what we're doing today, but Paul said that when he was doing those things, when he thought that, this was what was in his life. And if these things are in our life today, something's wrong. We're not where we need to be with Jesus Christ. He says there, again, But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. After that, the kindness. After that, God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. So have eternal life. That's the kindness and the love that God had for you and me. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. You know he appeared here upon the earth. Has he truly appeared in your life? And is he there today? In your life. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. He makes it very plain and clear to us now how that happens. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen to that, friend. Is that in our life today? Let's read that again. The love and the kindness appeared unto men of God. Not by your righteous works, he says, but according to his mercy. According to the mercy and love of God, he saved us. He sent his son here. And to all that accept him, he will save them. By the washing 
of regeneration, washing away our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb. Renewing by the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost within us. Renewing us, giving us life, giving us new life, taking the old man out, the sinful old man, and putting in that new man, that righteous man, that is the works of God, which he shed on us abundantly, he said, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Peace be with you. Joy be with you. Which he shed on us abundantly. And I know that. I know that that spirit can be upon us abundantly and give us all that we need and can overcome all things. And I want you to know it. I want everybody here to know that and accept that and to be at one so that we can all cross over into eternal life because he lived here upon the earth. We can live today. Because he lived we can face Satan in whatever he has to throw against us because he lived. Because he overcame. Because we are now justified by his grace, by his love, by his power that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I want to ask you a question. You don't have to answer me, but I want you to answer it to yourself. Is there anybody in here today that does not want eternal life? Are you justified by the Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ in your works, in your life? Are you justified? Has your sins been removed? Do you understand all about what we were talking about there? That for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, is that in us? Is that what that Spirit is doing in there? Are you being justified by that Spirit and that you are being taught that now by the Spirit of God? And you know, you can be justified to enter into the kingdom of God by the power of blood, by the power and blood of Jesus Christ. You are now justified to enter into the kingdom of God, into heaven, into eternal life. Is that the case with us all? Oh. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now listen to what he was saying there. And people will try to tell you that your works has nothing to do with it, what you, how you live your life. Listen to what Paul was telling this young preacher to teach. And it is not what your works, it's not your righteous works. 
but there's something within you that will bring forth those works, and that's the Spirit of God. This is a faithful saying, he said. And these things I will that you uh, thou affirm constantly. He says these are faithful, and I want you to confirm it to your people to that you are teaching to their constantly be bringing this to forth to their mind. That they have belie- which have believed in God. Now that's how it happens. Those that have believed in God and received that new birth might be careful to maintain good works, letting that Spirit maintain those good works in you, letting the Spirit of God take away the worldly lust, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. This is a faithful saying, he said, the doctrine of Jesus Christ and how we can have these things. And I want you to confirm and you affirm this constantly to your people that they which believe, listen, that believe in God. And if we believe in God, we believe that God sent His Son Jesus Christ here and that we might then be careful to walk in his commandments to hear his word and to maintain by the spirit of the Holy Ghost good works these things are good and profitable unto all men. Listen. These things, these words that I have been talking to you about, Titus, and these words that I have been preaching and teaching you about here this morning are good and profitable unto every one of us. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. And don't get involved in things that people may want to get you down into the weeds on certain things that really has not a lot to do with your salvation. Believe on Him. Stay out, keep the worldly lust and things out of your mind. That's what He's saying. Work toward that. Let the Holy Ghost deliver you. But He says, avoid getting into arguments about such things there, of questions and genealogies, where you came from, what your name is, what race you are, whatever they say. He says, don't get involved in that kind of things and contentions and strivings about the law. Those things are gone. They're past. For they are unprofitable and vain, he says. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition rejects. Knowing that he that is sup is subverteth and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Be a heretic, not hearing the doctrine, not listening to it, teaching things different from the doctrine that we have talked about here this morning. He says, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Be careful. Let no man deceive you. But be careful what you hear, what you pay attention to. When I shall send Artemis unto you, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Just encouraging these brothers, this young man, to encourage others and to... Help him then and others on their journey as he was going away. And this was Paul. And Paul was probably in his 60s when he was writing these things. He had been a servant of Jesus Christ for probably somewhere approximately 30 years when he was writing. And he, but he had, he had been a faithful servant of God and Jesus Christ. 
He had fought a good fight, as he said, told Timothy. I have fought a good fight. He says, henceforth, my time of departure is near. I fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. And he says, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness from Jesus Christ. And he says, and not only for me, but for all of those that love his appearing. And he's talking about for all of those that love the appearing of this doctrine, of these words, of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost appearing in your life. He says, there is a crown of righteousness laid up for you if you want it. And you can fight that same good fight. Paul was encouraging another young brother there, Timothy, when he said that that Timothy could see that this elder brother, this aged man in the church at that time had lived a life for all these years, these maybe 30-some years, probably older than Timothy even was. And Timothy knew something about this man and his life and how that he had set forth as he was giving, telling me to live my life. This was the way that this man had. He was an aged man. He was sober in truth. He was grave in his words. He was temperate in giving them out. And he was sound in the faith. And sound in charity patience waiting on God to direct him in whatever way that he saw fit God did a mighty work in that man and here now he was encouraging others still while he was here upon the earth and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. And that's what he's talking about. Let ours. Let all of those that are a part of the church also learn to maintain good works. That's what he was talking about. Let ours also. Let ours, those that are a part of our group, of our king, of the kingdom here that we are a part of. Let them learn to maintain good works. And that's what I want every one of you to be putting here today. That we're all striving and letting that spirit maintain spiritual works within us. That spirit doing it for necessary uses. And those necessary uses are to overcome sin, to overcome Satan. He is not going to walk away and just leave you forever. He says resist him and he has to flee. But he will come back. And that's the necessary time that then you have the power of God to overcome him, to maintain those good works that you're able to do. That you be, that they be not unfruitful, but they bring forth fruit. Bring forth righteous fruit. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. And that is how I would like to leave each and every one of you here today. All that are with me, salute thee. I want each and every one that is with me spiritually to salute and recognize his spirit wherever you may see it. And greet them that love us in the faith. 
Greet one another. For you see that love in the face of Jesus Christ. Grace, power, love, and mercy from God be with you all this morning that you might be pricked in your heart or you might be encouraged, you might be filled with that new birth and be, as he said, to instruct, to rebuke, to instruct all of those, to encourage. And that's what I hope you take away from this sermon here today. To be encouraged. To know that God loves you. He loves you so much that He gave His Son. And He loved you so much He was obedient to His Father. And He loves you so much that He's offering to each and every one of us eternal life. That being justified by His grace, you can be justified by the grace of God. We should be made heirs, an heir with Jesus Christ to the throne of God according to the hope, and we can have that hope, of eternal life. Friends, I point you to Jesus Christ. He is the only way. I will do anything that I can to encourage you. If you're troubled and you want to talk about something, I'll be glad to discuss these things. But His Word is here. And if we truly want it, He has promised, I will write it in your heart. I will put it in your mind. My Word, my Spirit, and you can see victory. You can overcome Satan. And you can have eternal life. That's a promise. It's up to us. Have we heard his sound doctrine? Are we willing to examine ourselves? Take it to Jesus Christ. We'll sing in the conclusion of the service. We'll sing number 308. Only trust him. That's about as strong again as it could get. It brings right in. Only trust him. That's what we've got to do. Number 308.
I present you to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And may the Lord receive you. That song that we just sung, I hope that we let that stay in our heart. He says, come every soul by sins oppressed. There's mercy in the Lord. And there's mercy there for us all. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him. He will save you. He will save you now. Go to him. Let us pray. To God the Father, we come to you today and just thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to come out and to sit together and to hear your word discoursed on and to be able to take it and to put it into our heart, into our treasure, that we might be able to use it when the time is necessary. God, we beg for you to be with all those that are struggling today to help them to put their faith and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ. And get it off the things of this world and to be at one with you. We just beg that you fill us with your Spirit, that we are able to encourage one another in your Word. And we ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen.